Earlier today, I mentioned the story of the Austin Business Journal, KXAN-TV, also including that story in their report. That's how I found it. It was on my, I guess, on my timeline about UT and the 15 plus million dollars in NIL money. And then I had the conversation with Pete Nakos as a story on his Twitter feed. But he had mentioned to me, here's just a few things he said to me. I said, who else would be in this neighborhood? And it didn't surprise me the number, although it probably did initially. He said A&M, it's being reported that they spent 8 to $9 million in 2022 alone. Ohio State, obviously. Uh, Alabama, the Bryce Young. How much was Bryce Young getting? Remember, Saban admitted he was getting seven figures at, I think it's some, may have been media days. Mm-hmm. But seven figures is still, if it's a million, it's one-fifteenth. USC with Caleb Williams. Pete Nakos, by the way, telling me that Jordan Addison didn't get a lot of money, even though he's ch- he transferred from Pittsburgh to USC. Kentucky men's basketball. Remember, this is men's basketball, all sports. And then Florida, Georgia. And then he said, wait a minute. This is at the end of the conversation. I wouldn't be surprised if LSU blows that number out of the, 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 the sky with football and also with what they have Olivia Dunn and the women's basketball players that have gotten to be rock stars along the way. Yeah, but LSU's not paying that, though, right? And that from just their collectives or whatever, yeah. so it's not like LSU's paying that. Well, no, money. no, this yeah. is NIL no matter how right. it comes together. Yeah, I just mean like LSU's spending $10 million. Well, no, they aren't. Uh, their, their donors are, but, yeah, I mean, they're very much in the NIL mix. Sounds like all a bunch of schools from the same exact place. Um, that's making the most money that we hear about all the time, also spending the most money to get the most talent, and that just kind of goes in a cycle that is probably never going to be broken, really, except for the, you know, random Ohio State or Michigan jumping into that mix and and being in there and, you know, probably some ACC schools. Um, But, you know, beyond this year, I wonder how many Big 12, Pac-12, and, um, you know, outside of the – whatever that little nickname was for the ACC schools that were threatening uh, to leave a couple months ago, you know, outside of them, the rest of college football, you know, what's the the average? Uh, There's definitely a drop-off, and, you know, that's only going to continue as we move forward. So uh, interesting to hear. You know, it's crazy, though. I could go and say, how much uh, money does the Toronto Raptors spend on their, their team? And you know what? I could Google that and find that. How much do the Dallas Cowboys spend on their team? I can go Google that and find that. How much does LSU spend on NIL? We don't really like to say exactly because, you know, like it's not really – it's just it's the secretive nature of this is so stupid. Uh, it really is. And, and I get that, you know, it's not professional sports, so there's no need to divulge every detail. But it just makes it feel, you know, as uh, – not, not as sleazy because it's all very much above board, but it's – it makes it feel sort of secretive for no real reason at this point. I, I don't know what anybody's trying to hide. I, I think it would be just cooler to say instead of on three coming up with whatever numbers they're coming up with, which they admit, you know, there's a formula for, but no one really knows what that is. And it's been, you know, a cool tool to see, although sometimes I see it and I'm like, there's no way in hell that's true. There's just, there's no way. Um, so just a little bit more of a peek behind the curtain onto what's what rather than what we're just fed, I feel like would be nice from a a fan standpoint. Well, again, I think it's one of those things where this was so taboo for so long. No one, like there's not no one, but there's this large segment of the population in college athletics that doesn't want to talk about it like it's legal all of a sudden. Kind of like weed. Like if you live in Arizona and you were against marijuana legalization or you just had in your head that marijuana was illegal and now it's legal, you might be like, oh, uh, Fred smokes weed. And you're like, well, you don't have to whisper anymore. There's a dispensary right over there he just walked out of. Yeah. I mean, the cops saw him do it and nobody stopped him. So you don't have to worry about it anymore. The the stigma is gone. So we're still the early phase of it where everybody still thinks this is illegal and look not all the nil stuff is going to be above board because that's part of the reason why it's still being kept quiet but yeah to me alums would want to be proud to be able to have that number out there i bet that ut fans were like hell yeah we're doing that again and and craig and i i think talked about this when you were gone smokey if 
when Nick Saban said what he said about Jimbo Fisher, if Jimbo had just gone, well, I mean, it's legal now. What do you want me to do? Yeah, what you do know, you, like, you, want to, yeah. you want me to not do it? Yeah. yeah, sure. Okay. I'll ride your moral high horse. I'm trying to win national championships here. I'm under some pressure. Or get to a bowl so, game. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, that yeah, I'm trying yeah. to catch them. So right. it's just, it's One a thing weird thing. you said, though, in the text when I included that, when I shared that with you guys, the numbers, is one of the things you mentioned that there would be at some point or another a reset, a, a reset of this. What did you mean by that? Well, I do think that um, there's a market correction coming, at least in certain places, where if I'm paying and paying and paying and nothing happens, uh, then I'm not going to pay into that anymore, or I'm not going to pay in as much. So I think that the the uh, I think it's going to be a constantly fluctuating market because, and it's the early parts of it right now texas is only in year three under steve sarkeesian so it's not like you know you should be expecting him to win national championships in year one or two but by year three you want to see some progress now they're going to the sec you want to see them start making the playoff regularly but if i'm paying for a coach that doesn't regularly get in the in what will now be the 12 team playoff i and a players and all that then eventually i'm going to stop doing it and there's going to be a market correction to it and you could get out ahead of the market correction by maybe being more forthright with all this stuff so that people see what's going on. But yeah, I think eventually there's going to be a market correction. I, I disagree. I, I think that people are going to spend money to see their team win regardless. I, I think that maybe on occasion there's somebody who was donating, let's say, $2 million to UCF, and they're like, you know what, it's just never going to happen. Fine, I'm, I'm throwing in my chips, and I just it's just it's pointless. I think there may be people like that, but I don't for one second believe that Ohio State fans are suddenly going to be like, you know what, we've been spending too much money on this product and we're not winning national titles. If anything, the new coach comes in and demands more money. Like, it's only going to grow because the next guy comes in and is like, well, I know y'all were doing what y'all were doing before, but in order to get this thing back on track, we got to really invest in the program and, like, that song and dance. And, you know, you don't, you don't retract – uh, in college sports, you just add and add and add and add. And, you know, some of them are forced to retract or to stop at a certain point. And for those folks, Paul, you're probably right. But under no circumstance whatsoever do I see any of the quote-unquote blue blood schools overcorrecting or, you know, correcting their positions. I do, think they only they solidify no them because they're all going to be making more money. Yep. And where's that going to go? You're going to have – a rainbow waterfall instead of the crimson one? I mean, like, what all do you need to still do with all the extra money that's going to become pouring in? That's all going to athletes. Right. How often do school fan bases of the larger, again, schools that are so committed to winning, how often do they stop spending money on facilities? When they want a coach fired and when then they he want gets it, fired exactly and the new guy right. comes in and they say, here oh, you go. Here we go. Back at the table. All right. Uh, yeah. We do have off the radar with Craig around the corner. Then